Hey folks, welcome back. If you haven't noticed, I'm big into different FPV radios. I am all about variety and choice and just trying every radio out. Plus, uh, you know, I make radio grips for pretty much all the popular brands of radios out there, um, except for Spectrum and uh, Futaba, just because I can't afford any of those radios. Uh, but so I, I end up acquiring a lot of different FPV radios. And the one I like the most right now is the TBS Mambo. No, I'm not a fanboy. No, I'm not on the hype train. It's just meeting that very happy medium of things that I like in a radio. Prior to this was the Tango 2. I liked that radio because it was small and compact. Didn't like it because it was Crossfire. Uh, I liked it before I put the external JR Bay. I put that on there and it kind of ruined the aesthetic of it. Um, but I like the fuller form factor of this, not the big form factor like the TX16S. But I've been kind of holding off doing my like long-term-ish review of this radio. I've had it since it came out. Uh, I bought it the day uh, it was announced on TBS. This is the ethics version. As you can see, it says ethics on it, which means absolutely nothing. It's a little more expensive. Has uh, a cool little kickstand on it. We'll get We'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, some sw socks, some switch socks, and some switch socks, and a, a little bit different color. And the uh, the knob, you see that? You see the knob there? Goes up to eleven. Yeah, it's one more than ten. Doesn't do anything different. It's just just for looks. But the big reason I like the Tango Two is it didn't have any of these stupid little. Dingus arm switches, and today it finally happened. I broke one. Broke a switch because it fell off my desk. The reason it fell off the desk is because this piece of absolute dog sh stand failed. Uh, we'll head over to the bench, and I'll show you what exactly happened. So, like I said, I do like this radio, but the stand that comes on it is hot garbage. TBS really needs to revise how they design this thing. For starters, what mounts it into the body of the radio is just a couple of really coarse threaded screws. And these things barely, barely grip the plastic. I mean, if you tighten these down too much, it's going to strip. Uh, not super happy with those. But the reason the radio failed, or the fell, is because the pins have worked themselves out of the uh, the stand. And I, I don't know what they're doing with their manufacturing process, but look at that. Look, the pin already just fell right out. These things are not held in there. They're not held in there very good at all. So if you have one of these and you have a kickstand, check your pins, make sure they're not about to fall out. So what happened is the pin fell out, sat on the desk and the stand tipped to the side and the radio fell down. Is it entirely the radio's fault? No. Is it somewhat my fault? Yes, because I wasn't paying attention. But, you know, you got to stand. You'd think it would stand up. So, unfortunately, that's why it fell down, and that's why the switch broke. And these switches, the replacement has been uh, one of my dreaded, one of the things I've dreaded having to deal with since I looked at how this radio was built uh, on day one. Uh, and once we get in there, I'll show you exactly why I'm worried about that. Now, coincidentally, I had also picked up one of these. This is the clear nostalgia shell for this radio. I was planning on putting the guts into the shell anyways. It just so happens to be that I have to get into the radio to repair that switch. So let's get into this radio. I'll show you how I'm going to fix that switch. And hopefully that'll help you folks out in the future. Uh, when your stand fails and you never like, break one of these switches. I really wish they were all rockers like the Tango 2. I don't know why they're not. All right, here we go. Take your module out, take your batteries out, you know, all the standard um, pre-op uh, precautions. I'm not worried about backing anything up from the radio. If uh, nothing we're doing here should kill anything in the radio, of course, well, you never know. So we've got those two things we've got uh we got some got some two and a half millimeter drive screws in the back here and if you're looking at these radio grips going hey man those look really good how do i get a set of those well there's two places you can go you can go to tweetfv.com pick up a set off my website 
real low shipping rates. Or you can go to racedayquads.com and pick up your set there. I make them for just about every popular radio out there with more brands to come. And if there's a design, color, whatever that you want, that you don't see, uh, hit me up. Go to twfv.com and find the contact link. And uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. Those two out. Take off these rubber pieces here. Well, maybe you don't have to. I don't know. I'll take them off anyways. So that's it. Back shell's off. Uh, the rubber grips come off with it. I think that might be an upgrade for the Epics versions, those rubber grips as well. Not 100% sure. So we have a buttload of screws here. Um, so the ones that say gimbal, we don't want to touch, but the ones that say front, those are the ones that got to go. We're going to need a uh, one and a half millimeter driver. The ones I'm using are MIP branded. These are extremely high quality drivers. Along with that comes a higher price. So if you're looking to just get some super nice, nice hex drivers, uh, MIP is the one to get. I'll put a link in the video description for you. I think it's funny that they labeled this mainboard as TBS Mambo mainboard. TBS Tracer for 2.4G makes you think that there might be a non 2.4 gigahertz model. But uh, as of right now, there is not. And we also need to pull our trims off the switches. I do have one of these special tools for pulling the trim switches off or the, the trim rings from the switches off. Um, you definitely don't need this. It just makes life a little bit easier. You can certainly do it with two flathead screwdrivers or even like a set of snap ring pliers. And I'll be honest, this, this tool doesn't quite work all that well anyways. Oh, son of a bitch. All right, well, I guess I need two switches. I didn't realize that one's broken too. Must have fell pretty hard on that side. All right, get this out and this should just press apart like that. So when we do that, we have... Damn, really broke the shit out of that one. We've got one connector inside of here for our speaker. It's gotta get disconnected and one at the bottom here for the backlight and another one here for the LCD display. You just kind of lift up. You just kind of lift up on this little black tab here and that pulls off. So we can take this and set the side. I will say one of the other things I don't like about this radio is these trim pieces here. They're just held on by hopes and dreams. Uh, you know, it's just melted plastic in the corners kind of holding them together. So if you're a little rough when putting it back together, because it is a pretty tight fit, that trim ring will break. So we're gonna put that aside. Here is our switch dilemma. The big deal with, geez, with these is that they are kind of installed at an angle and they are soldered directly to the PDB. They're soldered directly to the PCB. So a couple different ways you can take care of this. You can hopefully get a hot air rework station, heat these up and pull them out. You can try to desolder each one of them one at a time. Uh, that's very difficult to do. Or you can do what I think I'm probably gonna do and just cut them off and desolder them individually. Probably gonna be the easiest way to do it. Problem with cutting is you do have to watch where all your stuff goes. So let's, let's get at her. Just gonna get in here really carefully and just start cutting away the switch. Be very, be very careful not to hit the PCB. Um, we can always take off more in the end. And just kind of keep an eye on the direction that the, the stuff's flying. I'm trying to keep it from going towards the gimbals. Um, but, you yeah. So we've gone through the first two legs of the switch. 
see right there. So all we're left was that last one, which um, I'm not going to bother cutting through that because we don't need to. So from here, I'm just going to use my, uh, <clears throat> my TS uh, SQ whatever, you know, TS100 soldering iron clone thing. I'm going to use a lot of solder wick to kind of pick up the pieces and get some of that solder out of there. There we go. So first switch is off. No struggles, no nothing like that. So we just gotta push the old pieces out. Real. And that's out of there. And now I'll just clean up a little more of the solder wick. There you go. She's gone. No stress, no struggles. Quick and easy. Uh, all you gotta do is cut it. Uh, normally, I, I, I don't really suggest using a Dremel. Uh, there's something called a jeweler saw, it's just a little hand saw that would work very well for this. Um, using a set of diagonal cutters like this can work, but the problem I've experienced trying to use diagonal cutters to cut something that's soldered solidly like that is when you're doing this, you're, you're forcing a wedge between the part and the, PC, the, PD, the PCB, and you can end up wrecking traces very easily with a set of side cutters. So. Uh, mechanically, using a saw, a Dremel, something like that, tends to be the safest way to do it in my experience. Let's get switch numero dos out of there. There we go. All we gotta do is get through the first two legs, just like before. Need a little solder wick, get our iron up to temperature. Uh, I do everything at 850 degrees Fahrenheit because um, reasons. So now that we got the switch out, we need to replace it. There are a whole plethora of different switches you can use. Uh, here's just a few different ones I have on hand. This is just a simple three position switch. Uh, it's not the same as the one that came out, but you know, it works. Uh, you could use a momentary push button. You just have to tell your radio that you're using a push button there. Uh, then there's one like this. It looks like a three position switch, but it's uh, position one and two are holding and the third position is a momentary. So that is also another option for you. Um, I'm probably just gonna replace it with two of these. They are extremely cheap and they're shorter than the originals, which is fine by me. The, the originals don't need to be as tall as they were. So I'm just gonna replace it with these. I'll put a link to some replacement switches in the video description if you need to get some. Uh, you can try to find them there. But we're gonna finish up why we came here and that's to swap this nostalgia shell onto this PCB. I need to finish pulling apart the rest of the guts of this radio. You get the screen out and the speaker out. Um, the last time I did a nostalgia shell swap, uh, the speaker didn't survive. So I used some pretty darn good glue to hold that thing in there. Um, the display should just kinda pull off these little studs here. Yeah, it's a little bit of adhesive on the bottom. Slowly peel it back till it comes apart. So this is just the backlight for the display. And the display itself is gonna have even more adhesive on it, I'm sure. I'm gonna use the world's most abundant spudger, an old prop. I'm gonna use that to get underneath the display, kind of cut the adhesive off. So just work our way around. Uh, using heat would help as well. And just slowly peel this back. 
Be very careful you don't crack the screen. These OLED screens are extremely fragile. If any luck, this comes off without too much of a mess. No such luck here. So there is the OLED display. Clean up some of the goo that's around the edges here. Be really careful not to break this thing. I don't have a replacement. I don't want to get one. All right, I'm definitely gonna have to hit that with a little bit of like goof off or something like that to just get the rest of that adhesive residue off of there. We'll do that in a minute. Ah, uh, TBS, you smart, crafty bastards. They included a speaker. Awesome, so we don't have to screw with that. They've got all the parts. They've even got the glass and the adhesive for the display. So that's awesome. I'm not even gonna mess with it at that point. So, last thing we gotta do is get our, our lanyard clip Purdue thingy out of here. All right, we got our nice nostalgia shell here. Um, I'm gonna put the lanyard and, all, and the power button on uh, after I get the screen in place, just because I think it's gonna be easier Pop the center section out of here. We don't need that. This adheres to the screen like so. We're gonna go and stick it on here first. We go like like that. Don't want to screw this up. Probably going to. Good with things like this. Wow, that's really stuck in my finger. Alright. There we go. That's that. Take our screen and set it down nice and gently over those little pegs. There is our display reinstalled. And we can give it another, another quick cleaning. And then we can put our front faceplate on. Uh, something I like to do when I do custom radios is put like a little piece of like 20% window tint on the back side of this thing. Really makes it kind of look kind of cool. But um, I'm not gonna do that today. Put like 5% limo tint on a buddy's once. That was too much, too much. Very carefuling, carefuling. There we go. There's our display, reinstalled. There we go. That's reinstalled there. Pretty easy. All right, now we gotta do our buttons. Uh, new buttons came in the pack. So take those, install them, so make sure that the little clips here go over top of the buttons. And then you got these two little pegs back here that the buttons, uh, that go through the buttons. As you can see on the original shell here, these are just melted over. So a uh, real easy way to do that, just take our soldering iron and we'll use that to press those down. And we'll turn the temp down a little bit for that. Uh, probably go down to like 400. And all you gotta do is just press down on them. Nice and gently. You don't want to overdo it. Just add more heat. Can't take it away once you're done. Mm, I can smell the ABS burning now. Now, I'm not a big weenie when it comes to fumes, but this is definitely ABS. And ABS, it's bad for you in large quantities. As far as this goes, it ain't gonna kill you. But just know that uh, it might be kind of annoying. Some people are way more sensitive to uh, things like that than other people. Just keep that in mind if you're one of those people. Act accordingly. Now we gotta put on our trim rings. These go around the gimbals. Notice one says an L and an R. We're gonna put the R on 
I'm gonna put the the right one on this side because this is the right side of the radio. I honestly don't think you can get these backwards. Nope, no you can't. They're kind of idiot proof. But uh, I've never met an idiot that couldn't disprove me. And again, just like before, has little nubbins here that need to be uh, need to be melted over. I want to apply pressure to the ring so that we make sure it's seated right up against the body of the radio before we start pressing down on the pins. Rinse and repeat for the other side. Now there's a lot of really cool things you can do with these radio shells. Like uh, you can paint the inside of them, which looks really cool uh, with that frosted finish on the outside. I want to leave this one clear because I'm thinking about putting some RGB action inside of it. Uh, speaker, pretty simple. Just have a little bit of double-sided tape. There's a little index mark here where the wires come out. We go. And now we can put our button in. Lanyard only goes in one way. It's indexed. So don't try any funny business. Back to the switch replacement. The switches end up getting replaced. Uh, the switches that we're going to replace, we need to install them in the chassis first before we install the, the board. The board is what is going to help align everything to the proper orientation. I uh, like that really short switch. That's that's what I want right there. That looks good. All right, so since I used a uh, an abrasive wheel to cut that s those two switches off, I want to just make sure that there's nothing gritty and grimy inside that gimbal there. Just move around. Feels good. Uh, another thing you can do that really makes this radio way better is put some of that uh, that Nia gel on the contact surfaces of the gimbals. Um, it doesn't make them smoother, but it makes them dampened. It's a really hard. It's hard to explain how it makes it feel, but uh, it makes this, the gimbals feel way, way better. All right. So we got our board, we got our, our switch uh, spots nice and clean. I'm gonna center up these switches, center, center up the gimbals. I'm gonna replace my knob because uh, that was an issue with the original ones. The knob just ground itself against the side of the case. Kind of hoping the new knob is a little um, a little bit smaller in diameter. There's a couple seconds from never having a speaker again. All right, got that. Go ahead and get our switches oriented properly. Now you gotta be really careful around the gimbals when you push these down and in. Um, you'll end up breaking the little the, the little rings out of here, and it's really annoying when you do that. So see, they don't line up super well. You just need a little bit of support while you push them in. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna just loosen up the gimbals just a smidge, just to help them align themselves. Gives them a little bit of room to float around in there. Very carefully work your way around it. All right, that's in. Let's get our screws in to secure the front.
All right, we got the five front screws tightened down really well. Go back around and tighten down the gimbals. Four screws for the gimbals and, well, four for each gimbal and then 10 for the entire back uh, PCB. Well, that feels a lot better. All right. Now that's all installed, we gotta get around to soldering those switches back in. Alrighty, we're gonna need lots of heat on this one. Uh, as you can see, the switches are oriented exactly the way they need to be. Uh, a little lower here than on the top. So now that we got those kind of ready to go, uh, 850 dungarees, uh, I don't play around. I go in hot, hot and quick. Get a little, little solder on there just to make a thermal bridge. And let's go. One down. Bingo, bingo. I think we got it, boys. Pro tip when you're done, put a bunch of solder on your tip before it cools off. Don't clean it off. Just let it sit. Keeps oxygen from getting to the tip and keeps it from oxidizing. You're welcome. Another thing about the Tango 2 that I didn't like is the momentary switch on this side was really spongy. Um, hitting it with some tri-flow and then putting a little bit of Nia on there made a big difference. Put our switch rings back on. There, I, I honestly really like these short switches here on the side as opposed to these ones. These ones are just asking to get broken. Uh, hopefully these ones survive a little bit better. Not saying they will, but the shelf fit isn't great. The only thing making it actually close up the gap is just the tension on the screws. It's probably because the, um, the switches actually end up flexing the PCB a bit to give them that angular uh, positioning. And that's it. TBS Mambo in the Nostalgia Shell. Really awesome looking radio. Especially, <laughs> I love the I love the see-through shell. Really good looking. Uh, the only thing you might have to do when you're done is recalibrate your gimbal since we took them and made them loose so we could get them lined back up uh, when we reinstalled the shell. It could throw off the calibration because the uh, the gimbal and the hull sensor pickup are two separate pieces. The the pickup is on the board and the magnet is on the gimbal piece that we loosened up. So uh, there's a very good chance that they won't be centered anymore. So run through the calibration real quick and you should be just fine. Uh, as far as the stand goes, I'm not putting that back on. I'm going to email TBS and be like, yo, bro, what the fuck? And uh, see if they can send me out a new one or maybe maybe they've actually found this as an issue and have improved it since then so we'll see on that one all right folks that's uh that's how you replace the switches and replace the shell if that's what you want to do if you want to get some grips for your radio go to tweetfv.com you can find the link in the video description there you can also find a way to support me by either being a patron or uh, clicking the affiliate links down there that all helps me out tremendously uh let's see what's next rgb who wants to see some unicorn vomit in this sucker I certainly do. All right. Well, that and maybe integrate Express LRS into the radio. Ooh, that ought to piss off some fanboys. Yeah. All right, folks. We'll see you next time. And as always, please stay positive, folks. <laughs>